I was trying to have a release party in Memphis, Tennessee, and we wasn't doing it on a level. So Tracy came out of the audience and was like, uh uh, we're going to do a question and answer. <laughs> we're going to get this together. And like I said, it was my first time ever trying to do something, but just the love, the passion in her heart to see me win and to see me do things right. She wanted me on that stage to look uh to look like the, 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 the in other words to look like my future not my present but to look like my future and tracy that has always been something that stuck near and dear to me even when i do autographs when i when i would do interviews going forward i'd be like oh no if tracy was here this is how this would go because in that question and answer period she was able to pull things out of me about how the album was derived and everything and that was at my beginning stages and so that probably was album one or album two but now at album 12 i'm just going full circle and then uh marquee of course has been with me of course um the first song that marquee did on me really should have been a single uh the song uh, creating me and it's coming back marquee it's coming back i'm still gonna get a chance to do it um david gillard was with me uh with bless his name with with uh with teaming up and getting that done and so all of y'all have played such a vital role. But the thing that I can always say every time I've called on anybody from my home team, uh, and I call y'all the home team because it's several of us to come out of that region uh, that have gone on. But I know when I reach back and I need y'all, I can always get y'all. So really, I want to salute y'all and just thank y'all for being such a vital part of where I am and not just where I am, but even from where I'm going. Uh, y'all are going to continue to be a part of everything that I'm doing. So uh, it's kind of like I want to kind of, Tracy, for the first time, I want to kind of interview you guys. Um, but one other thing I want to say is growing up uh, in Memphis, there's three people's name I have to call. Growing up on the outskirts of Memphis, I had to drive into the city uh, uh, because I got in a little trouble and I couldn't be educated in the Memphis City School. So I had to go, uh, still was in Shelby County, but I was in the Millington area. Mm. But the people that really kept me grounded when I was about 12 years old, Orlando Draper came to a, a concert that we had at a church called Oak Spring Baptist Church, way out in the country. Y'all don't know nothing about Arlington, Tennessee, but he really spoke into my life at 12. And I wasn't really interested because I was into my sports. I was into really my family and just our little stuff we do at our little country church. And the things that he spoke into my life, another one that spoke into my life around about the age 13, 14 was Jane Hope. And then I started hearing this woman by the name of Gina Stewart with this group called the Angelic Voices of Faith. Well, that really shaped my mindset about really wanting to be in gospel music because what I was accustomed to doing was going on Beale Street and listening to a young lady by the name of Chick Rogers. Y'all remember Chick Rogers? That we sing that. I wanted to sing blues. And then I heard B.B. King. And I mean, they was like vibing. I, I told my grandma, I said, I want to sing blues. And, <laughs> She said, the devil is a liar. You are not going to sing blues. But so people like the Orlando Draper and the James Popes and the Billy Rivers and the Gina Stewart, those are the people that really, really, really made me make up in my mind that what I want to do is gospel music. I don't know if I ever have shared that in a biography, but when I'm thinking on this record of what really made me want to sing for the Lord and see people come, it was those people. And then of course, later I run into the David Gillards and I run into the, the Marquis Walkers and then Tracy, of course, uh, Gregory Micah Seegers was the very first radio person that ever came to me and said, you know, you got the type of voice it's one day, son, you're going to be on the radio. Now, I'm at a, I was about 16 years old. So mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know anything about what radio. I thought radio was to listen to sports. Y'all remember W, uh, we did WLOK, uh, or was it W? We did it again, WDIA. All we listened to on the radio was sports. <laughs> and so I wasn't even thinking I was going to be on the radio as a singer. I thought he was saying, you're going to make it as a baseball player. You know, <laughs> you're going to be on the radio one day. So. All of this is just going through my mind as I think of my hometown. Every time I release an album, I want y'all to know, even though I've stayed in Washington, D.C. and now I live in Houston, a lot of people just don't understand. My roots go all the way back to Beale Street, Memphis, Tennessee, and Middleton, Tennessee. And so all of the people on this call, you guys were instrumental. So uh, I just want to take a moment starting with Tracy, and then I want to hear from Marquis, and I want to hear from you, David, as well. It's just your contributions to the records over the years. Uh, how has that experience? kind of been well first and foremost i want to thank you for even coming up with such a concept and to be on the phone with such amazing 
uh, producers and songwriters and musicians right here out of Memphis, Tennessee. I am very proud. One thing that this pandemic has taught me during this time is that many times we do what we do just because we love doing it, whatever field that we're in, we love doing it. And many times we don't get to uh, enjoy the, the, the blessings of it. Not that it's for us, but just to enjoy things that we've set out to accomplish that we have accomplished. And right. so everybody that's on here has done great things. And this pandemic has taught me to slow down and enjoy mm. the fruits of my, my own labor. So wow. to That's you, good. Ernest, um, this reflection is to, it's the fruit of your labor. Marquis, an amazing producer that has worked and done works that I didn't even know of. <laughs> um, David, an amazing songwriter, key, um, the piano, oh my God, enjoy. Genius. And, and and thank God for the fruits of your labor. So that's the first thing I want to say. Second thing is, uh, Ernest, I remember, I remember that day when you brought it up. Um, I think only children we have that, we don't try to have a takeover spirit, but <laughs> when you see something, you want to, you know, you just want to help that, that's you know, and, 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 and that's just how uh, I've really always been. Uh, I am Team Memphis. A lot yeah. of people don't think that, but um, right. when you get to this level that I'm at, you got to be serious about it first and foremost. Absolutely. This this is not Absolutely. a game, and everybody on this call is on this call for a reason because we realize it's it's not a game. And that's if you're going right. to get in it, you got to go on and do it. And that's exactly what you have done, um, Ernest. You have, I mean, you know, there are people being deemed as. You know, John P. Key, the uh, Prince of Gospel, and uh, you got um, uh, Prince of Praise, Byron Cage, and you yep. are Gospel's gentleman, and you represent <laughs> like that. that. You, you yeah, that. I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen that, and and you have represented um, very well your unique style. Um, I remember interviewing you, and you told me that you start you wanted to do R and B. Yeah, but it, you you mentioned that it was Orlando and um, others here in Memphis that um, I guess pulled you. And then God knows what you know. God he he orders our steps. You know when yeah. when we when we at the end of the day he orders our steps. And so you have done a marvelous work. Uh, wow. Twelve albums. Uh, you've been on many stages and you sing your range. I mean, you're just a singer, singer. And that is a gift. That's a gift, you know, and uh, we can't take that from you. You made us so proud. And so, you know, hats off to you. I ask, you know, as I say to people like Richard Smallwood, and now I'm saying it to you, your music, the rain on us, those songs will outlive you. And at the end of the day, God will forever get his glory through your ministry because of the amazing songs that you have birthed. And so I just say congratulations to you. Thank you so much, Tracy. I just want to ask you, Tracy, how do you, because <clears throat> I never feel like you place one Memphis or anybody in that region artist above the other. How do you balance it? Because all of us, Cherry, we all like, that's our big sister. You're nurturing, you're loving. To me, I don't know how you do that because you got you got so many of us to come out of there, but we all feel like we the favorite one. How do you make us all feel special? <laughs> I speak. I put. I speak my mind and, 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 and tell you like it is. I, I don't. I don't favor. I don't try to favor anyone. My job is to play good music. Right. And my job is to. And if there is no good music to be played out of Memphis, Tennessee, then for iHeart Media, there will be no music. It is. It's no. It's nothing personal. It's business. It's business. And, it's business and so that's one thing um but i just i really try to be fair to i'm always fair to i have no reason to be upset with anybody and i right. try to be fair but um and i try to do the right thing and sometimes i you know i, I may slip or i'll let I won't, say, <laughs> I won't i won't say slip i'll say i'll go to the natural as, as opposed to the spiritual there you go. But there's a way to do anything. I'm willing to help anybody, and I'll share a lot of information that I should be getting paid for. Absolutely, but, I agree. you know, 
I can't make you, you know, do the things that you need to do. It goes beyond my radio station. Yeah. But I mean, I just think there's some amazing talent here in Memphis, Tennessee. Nice and um, that should be, you know, and I guess it's in God's time. And then you have to look at this as well. Some people may not necessarily want to get to where you are, Ernest. Right. And to get where you are, <laughs> you had to work. Oh, it, yeah. didn't come, it didn't come to you and 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 i have come to the realization that some people just don't want to work they don't yeah. they, <laughs> they start off wanting to work but it's hard <laughs> and, and i'm I mean, gonna tell them my funny that's, story that's about tracy, oh, tracy let me tell y'all something about tracy I, and you y'all know she's always happy and a, a big encourager but it's three people that when i'm doing a single i know they're going to be brutally honest <clears throat> it is cheryl cheryl jackson Neely mm -hmm. Jackson and Tracy McBain. So this one time, Tracy may not even remember this, but I had done this re this recording with a, I won't call the artist's name, but he's very urban. And so I sent it to her and it took her a day or two to get back. And I said, Tracy, what do you think of the single? And she said, um, let me ask you this. What do you think of the single? I said, oh, I think it's dope. She said, no, 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 let me ask you, what is your audience? What do you think of the single? And, th and then after you answer those two, I think you'll have your answer. So she never said it's good. Yes, go with. She said, I'm going to put it back on you because you know what your audience is listening for. The song is very urban. The producer is iconic. But P, really? <laughs> she never said yes or no, but when I hung that conversation up. <laughs> and let me say this the reason I said that is because that's okay for a song on an album cut. Yeah. But for your first single to your core audience, <laughs> who is that laughing? I, who is that? <laughs> it was just so funny because, you know, Tracy is not just Memphis. Now, we know she ours because she's from Memphis, but she has really a global responsibility as it relates to curating and putting music out there. So I just had to share that funny story with y'all of who she really is to us. Uh, she has elevated us and really caused us to really aim higher. She's never gonna let you be just at a at a uh, standstill and you're never gonna get comfortable. She's always gonna push you to that next level. So <laughs> I wanted to share that with y'all. Let me start with Marquis Walker because Marquis has worked with Sherry Jones. Uh, he has worked with, oh my gosh, Sherry Jones, Vicky Winans. It, it, it goes on and on. And Marquis has worked on the secular as well as the urban, as well as the side of worship where I am. So uh, Marquis, I just want you to talk about what happens when you think of the artists. Because when, when you write songs for me, I feel like you write them just for me. But I want you to talk about your process of how you help propel you know, us artists with that song, M marry the artist up with a right with the correct song. So, let me say this I gotta say this first and foremost. First of all, again, like Tracy said, thank you for just doing this. Thank you for bringing this on. I have to say that I am uh, frozen more than I am. I am more than elated to be a part of your process, a part of your, your albums, um, etc. And so, I just appreciate the fact that. That you are calling on me uh you always call on us i would say uh you know i'm still waiting on that arm and that leg <laughs> it's coming real let's call it it's coming the leg uh but now seriously um honestly the process and, and it's and it's funny you say that and i think i think keith knows it but everything i do is is david and i there mm -hmm. There's very few. There's there's there are a few projects that I do that is not the both of us in some type of way. And one thing one thing that I do, and I tell David all the time, uh, whenever we're working on a song, uh, and David can just and, and one of the reasons we work so well together, he can give me he can give me just say he gives me twenty five cent. I can take that twenty five cent and turn it into ten thousand dollars. Or uh huh. Absolutely. Such. And uh, so that's one of the reasons that we work so well together. But I'm saying that to say that a lot of times when we when we start on the song, uh, that that one song could be reworked 20 times until you actually feel it. Because and Tracy knows this. I mean, you know, you everybody.
I'm just sort of upbeat. I always say, if I'm not tired after I get done listening to the song, it's not good. Because I need, I should be, <laughs> you know, wow. I should be banging my head so to where I should be tired. And if it's a ballad, I should be able to, I should be able to get into my own education, into my own worship, listening to the song. Not because we did it, but because it's, it's, it's bringing in the presence of God. And so, um, to that end, the sound, for example, is wow. one of where uh, when we first did it, I kind of reworked it a few times before we both kind of said it, that's it. And it got to the point where we could listen to just music alone without even listening to the lyrics. And it would, it would take us to that place. And laid out when i heard her singing as soon as i heard the first that i said lisa mm -hmm. then i i see i zeroed in and, and i i even can see an evolution of your lyric content which is based on just where you are with your worship and with your walk with the lord and so your writing has always been and you and david every everything y'all have brought me has always been musically impeccable you can't touch it but what really arrested me with this song is the lyric content uh, of you saying that God's what God has done in heaven is now going to be released on earth as a worship leader for all these years that's been like my mantra if I could get to manifest in the earth to hear that's a sound that's being released in the earth and then it took me back to just scripture i said he's been in in the book because every time jesus made an appearance there was always a sound mm. before he had before he made an appearance on the day of pentecost there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind you know when when he went down and he talked to the people at uh, uh at the at the mountain there with moses there was a sound of there was always like a sound that preceded or if you would it went before he came it kind of set the atmosphere the sound let really announced that he was coming and so i was like for this record i was like on a cross between that being the title cut and outpour but it is going to be probably my next single and then when i started letting people hear it they was like i don't even care about production who wrote it i said man the i said the memphis connection is so strong y'all just don't know i rarely have come up with albums and haven't called on marquee and my memphis crew kevin davis and david gillard them to come and be a part because to me y'all really articulate the heart of the father and right now you can't just have a beat or just a string and, and horns you've got to have a message that is so cutting edge that it rips through everything else that's out there and that's what y'all brought me every time but i mean it has evolved now to such a level i was like wow <laughs> so thank you so much for you for you guys coming together Dave, now did david did you write on this i feel like david was in the backgrounds too helping with these background vocals i know when he's at work oh no no <laughs> background <laughs> You didn't do no, no backgrounds? Well, no. What was the backgrounds that I heard the first time? That's all Marquee Walk. What? Uh -oh. one, <laughs> of the, one of the amazing things about uh, our, our production company is that we know our lane. Okay. Like, we know our lane. I know that my strong point is writing. Okay. I know that Marquis' strong point is, is writing as well, but Marquis is a stronger producer uh -huh. um and uh we just like our gel is just amazing but yeah um the, the concept of the sound um so i i, I write off of inspiration um okay of, of what's what's going on what i'm hearing in prayer all of those kind of things it's just kind of how um i start off the process of writing the song it is not just from information for me it is it has to be inspiration okay I like so that. with yeah with the sound um <coughs> at that point of time I, and, and me and marquis always talk about you know we cannot stand uh the redundancy of everybody sounding alike okay 
every song sounding alike, everybody's on this CCM, everybody's on this, you know, warfare worship or whatever. So <laughs> when you hear one, you know, Tell you hear one album, yes, you know, you hear one album, you, you heard them all. So, um, you know, just the concept came to me. I'm like, you know, there is a sound that lives in each and every one of us. Absolutely. That, you know, that God wants to literally establish on the earth that is going to put your your fingerprint in the earth that oh, you right. don't have to sound like anybody else. You don't have to sing like anybody else, but your sound is going to penetrate the world. And that's kind of like where the concept comes from. So it's like, we, we are so like, uh, we've been doing this together so long. I can literally like, like hum something to Marquis and he'd be like, okay, and the next thing I know, it's like we, we finished the song. That's just our chemistry of, of what we do. Um, so, and like I said, like, as, as Marquis said, like pretty much 99.7% of everything we do, we do together. Um, that's just the, the relationship that God has given us. But I mean, again, I'm privileged chemistry. again to um, work on another amazing record with you uh i remember when um i first met you was with baba and uh oh my god <laughs> baba baba was just promising me he was like i'm gonna get you a song on Ernest P. record and I'm, I, I promise you you're gonna be on <laughs> he Ernest. did i remember he was yes very very aggressive about yes it. very aggressive so <laughs> uh when it came to that uh he, you know, not knowing that me and Marquis would, would would definitely begin to work with you, and it has been an amazing journey. Is Bless his name, uh, the first one that y'all brought, y'all did together. Yep. Was it Marquis? That's his name, the first. I'm one. gonna tell you what's funny. I have a cassette tape that y'all that that I think that he sent that somebody gave me of y'all starting out like doing it. There's three different versions of it. I yeah. feel like I have a cassette tape, and I was listening like, do you know how long ago that was? That was 2006, 2007. Oh, we didn't wow. record the album to 2008. Right, right. Yep. Y'all yep. been at it a while. So that's why there's such a chemistry. And that's what I want the world to know. I'm like, there's three people in Memphis, Tennessee. When I talk about the fabric of our album, the first thing I say is the first one, believe it or not, Kevin Davidson has a prophetic pen. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. been listening to Kevin Davidson because he was it was it was the white wasn't he the white district White Haven district choir something at one point. Boys Who was he? What's the thing happening? There you go. So when I first heard of him, he interrupted a concert. He was closing out a concert. Tracy, this is a true story. And I hadn't known nothing about. <clears throat> well, I had heard about the Holy Ghost. I had heard rumors of what it does. <laughs> he stopped a concert y'all with a people of people like us who we ready for you to groove and run he stopped the concert and he said 25 of y'all in here talented you're never gonna really go to where god wants you to go till you get filled with the holy ghost and guess what he said he said now kevin said this i'm in high school i ain't really even all that deep i'm really carnal i'm on my third time getting saved when i go to this concert he <laughs> says jesus told the disciples to don't even go try to witness till you get the Holy Ghost. Y'all shouldn't even be at this musical now mm -hmm. if you ain't got the Holy Ghost with your gift because he talked about spirits transferring. So me, I'm like, I ain't come to, I'm thinking we are gonna just rock out and we are gonna have a good time. So his his prophetic mantle, and I, 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 I was attracted to his prophetic mantle before I was his musical. Well, by the time he got through speaking all that and I started listening to his music, I was like, every time I put out music in the earth, Kevin Davidson got to write me a song. So he's written four songs on, he's written on four of the 12 albums I put out. And so when I think of, when I think of an album, believe it or not, people don't believe this. My process is, let me check with my Memphis crew and just see what God is speaking. Marquis gonna get a call. Um, Kevin Davidson gonna get a call. Tracy, but they is gonna wind up telling me what the, what the quality of the app. That's what I do. And then I recently learn because that's what I'm used to as a kid. Wow. So, I appreciate that from all of y'all. And so that's what today is all about. I'm just letting y'all know that the fabric that has helped wool me, to, uh, uh, put me together, if you would, has been going back to the people who are going to be uh, most honest with me and are going to give me the best type of content that I need. So, um, I, anything else anybody else want to uh, bring? I, I also want y'all to know Tracy has been with me in the, tr in the, um, 
the mountaintop and in the valley. I've cheated death at least three times. And I don't know, every time I've got to a low place uh, to where I was attacked in my body or attacked any other way, um, just the home team has always restored me, encouraged me, and brought me to where I want to be. So I just want to say to the world that everybody on this, from David Gallard to, to, to Marky Walker, to Tracy, Kevin in his absence, uh, and just shout out to people like, um, people like uh, Billy Rivers and the Angela Voices of Faith who are from there, uh, Sherry Joe, all of the people who have come from there have inspired me in some type of way. And I know we're wrapping up. Is it anything y'all wanna y'all wanna discuss about anything you have coming up that we need to be looking out for? Before, before we talk about something up, I do I, I hate Kevin is not on here. I know I that uh, a lot of that stuff well I would say once the transition of Kevin Davis Thank you so much forces happened. A lot of that stuff I was able to I was uh privileged to produce or co-produce and so thank you so much is that a part of no idea yeah when i sent it to you i think you said oh thank you and i said no 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 i'm talking about kevin you said no 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 <laughs> <laughs> you said my dna is in thank you so much too i'm like i can't get away from you dude i cannot get away so i didn't realize that so you was what 12 <laughs> you was about 12 <laughs> right with kevin I never uh, knew that. Yeah, I, I was, I think I had just turned 20, maybe. Okay. I, I want to, I started in 96, I think. Wow. And, yeah, 96 is when I started. Yeah, I was in high school. Okay, I remember. I've always, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead, Trey. No, I was going to say, I've always thought Kevin was a prolific songwriter. Um, I will forever say Fight On should have been yes. a, um, that was a, that was a national song. That was a that is what a national song sounds like, and the original version now is still worthy of a national song. It's Absolutely. a great song. But Let while I was about... listening, mm -hmm. while I was listening to uh, Marquis and David, I wrote that down. Oh. Those two are some. They're quiet storms. I yes. love them. Yeah, but they are I, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I wrote that down. <laughs> they're some quiet. They probably on music all over our station and I don't even know they've worked with you know and produced these songs but I <laughs> love them controller. because yeah I love them because they are a quiet storm yes they are they let their gifts speak for them truly wow. I was on the road one time and Vicky Winder was talking about Marquis and I was like excuse me are you talking about Marquis Walker because she kept saying my guy he beats and I said are you talking about my guy my guy uh because I'm Marquis work with me. She said, Oh, because she talking like he ain't work with nobody but her. I said, yeah. Ma'am, he wrote he wrote for me way back on my first couple of episodes. We we laugh and we giggle about that today. But let me go back to Kevin. Let me tell you how timeless his pen is. And and y'all, y'all will get this. I have prepared 14 tracks on this record that's coming out this weekend. And when E1 Entertainment heard God Wants to Heal You, I said, Y'all got to be kidding me. That album was recorded in 2008. I got new revelation knowledge to drop in the earth. They say, but what is happening in the right now? Please allow, and I said, well, you can't improve upon anything that Kevin has done. Number one, it ain't like you gonna improve. I just put it on the album really because I had been singing it doing my altar calls at my live concerts. So everybody was like, you gotta put God Wants to Heal You on there. I said, well, I'll put a little bit on it, but this song has already been done. It's just something for my devotional time. You know what I'm saying? So Richard Smallwood heard it and was like, Ernest, what you really need to do is put healing on the end of it. And then you have a whole song. Because I was just going to keep looping. God wants to heal you. Uh, God shall provide for you. We, so it became popular. I'm thinking we're done with that song, right? We come up to start letting them listen to my record. They were like, we love all 14 other tracks. But the lead out single needs to really be something that's going to resonate in the right now. They made this decision in January. The pandemic hit in February. We're in May. Wow. And now they're playing that song like it's the best thing since Bubblegum. And at first I had a little attitude. I, I felt some kind of way. Because I'm like, <laughs> I've invested all this money and time and energy in 14 brand new tracks. And y'all taking me back to 2009, <clears throat> but what the Lord had to do was really encourage me about, it ain't about your agenda. It really is about what I'm 
going to say at this season and time. So that song has really brought in a whole new fan base of people who have never bought any of the other 11 albums. And I think the song is like a trending at top top five, top six this week on Billboard. That song is 12 years old. Wow. So it's just an encouragement to people that when we put it out into the app, the, the, uh, when, when y'all brought me right on and said, bless his name, the people made me put bless his name at radio last year. I was like, why are y'all going back to all my old stuff? Am I washed up? Am I done? <laughs> they were like, no, <clears throat> your other stuff was just so, it resonated so well. So I just said that to say that my Memphis connection, I, I feel like I'm the most blessed artist out here doing it because I re really have a core of people who have their ear to the ground to hear what God is saying in this season. And that's why those songs will always hang around. They'll always be timeless. So uh, they're wrapping me up to the movie gotta go, but I just want to thank you guys. Really, I wanted to tribute to y'all today. A uh, shout out to all of the um, uh, other air personalities as well as in Memphis with you, Tracy. Anybody we missing that we need to call and say anything about? Um, <clears throat> years ago, we had, I can't remember her name. Eileen was there. Eileen mm -hmm. Collier, I think Eileen was a big mm -hmm. uh, supporter. Uh, Bountiful oh, Blessings, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, that radio station, WLOK, everybody who okay. has played our music. Uh, uh, WBBP. Uh, WBBP, that's right. Uh, big help and big support to us. Thank God for iHeart. Thank you all for, for just being there in my corner. Uh, and so we're wrapping up. David, I want you to tell me about the church because you're pastoring. You weren't pastoring uh, when I first started. But through this, process, tell me about the church. Uh, it has been an amazing journey. Uh, <laughs> it has been an amazing, amazing journey. And uh, I'm loving. Uh, a lot of people have... Uh, horrible stories of pastoring. <laughs> you don't. I don't. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm enjoying the growth. Um, I'm enjoying, even in this pandemic, um, understanding um, more ways to get the gospel across. Um, so it has been amazing. Um, we are um, one church, two locations. Oh, wow. And uh, and we're, we're doing some amazing things. Um, we were the first church to have um, a laundromat built um, that people can um, wash, <laughs> wash their clothes, all of those things for free. Um, wash them and make and, them uh, home. We, we are really, really, exactly, <laughs> you know. So we're really, really big on outreach. Um, seven, our church will be seven years old really? uh, this year. Seven that's years old, time. and we've we've done some uh, tremendous things. So that's uh, that's why we. We, we've kind of been away from the music, but you. still in the music <laughs> um, at the same time. Uh, because, you know, Marquis is slick pastoring too. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I, I watched the thing over there. <laughs> right. So, you know, but it has been it has been a tremendous journey. And I do want to say uh, to you um, as well, um, Ernest, thank you for believing in us. Yeah. Um, um, Tracy has always, always been, I mean, Ten toes down. Um, mm. Even when she was fussing, <laughs> ten toes it's all down. love. It's all love. So you know, you know what you get. But um, I appreciate you. I mean, just believing in, in our pen and, and production and all those kind of things. And uh, we do uh, keep uh, Key of D, which is our uh, production company, together. Oh, we wow. have, we do have some amazing things coming up. That's gonna like literally Projects. be like wow. Okay, I need this for the gospel truth and gospel news, honey. Uh, uh -huh. You gonna tell us? You gonna just tease us, or you gonna tell us, <laughs> Marquis? I don't know we can share this one just yet because it ain't. It ain't. <laughs> <laughs> you write the songs and make the whole world sing. Whole world <laughs> sing. Right. I will say. The, I will say. The the. The tune that they're interested in is going to be a major, major hit. Wow. All of my of gospel. It's, wow. gonna, it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a major hit. So um, as Tracy says, we, we we are quiet storms. We don't say a lot, but, yeah. but when that music yeah. when that music hit, you know, it we let the music for you. speak. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we're so gonna jump on guys. out of here. <clears throat> I'm prophesying that Tracy's gonna have a podcast by this time next year if i gotta help <sighs> finance it myself she's gonna do a podcast and help 
evolve, help us evolve as an industry. Educate us. We're not smart sometimes. <laughs> but they rapping me up. I love y'all. We got to come back and do it again after the album comes Bro, out yeah. and some of your other projects. Let's do it again. Let's do it. Let's do it. Please. All right. Memphis strong, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all. I love, I love, I love you too. Y'all.